We'll reconvene the work session for November 29th, 2021. Council discussion item 12.1, Church Scientology, Council Member Bunker. Thank you. Uh, I have a few notes written up here that I, I think will take me about eight minutes to stumble through. Um, and I, I hope that you uh, give me a chance to to discuss this before we, we open the floor. Um, I, I am working on three hours of sleep, and in Scientology terms, that would mean I'm unsessionable. I would not be able to hold on to the e-meter cans and, and uh, be audited. Uh, but I'm going to work through that and get this, uh, get this rolling here. Uh, because, since our last meeting, Tracy McMahon has broke another huge story in the Tampa Bay Times. Uh, since July 19, uh, 2019, rather, eight limited liability companies managed or operated by members of Scientology have bought 45 properties in uh, North Marina. Uh, $11.8 million in cash was used uh, to buy these properties again, and no signs of developments uh, for any of the properties, just as what happened with the properties purchased downtown. Uh, in the article, the mayor said he was concerned, and I'm sure we all are, because this is not a normal way of doing business. But when it comes to Scientology, there is not really a normal. Uh, I, I think it's important for you to understand the most important policy letter in Scientology, which is KSW, Keeping Scientology Working. And in this, L. Ron Hubbard wrote, we're not playing some minor game in Scientology. It isn't cute or something to do for a lack of something better. The whole agonized future of this planet, every man, woman, and child on it, and your own destiny for the next endless trillions of years depend on what you do here and now with and in Scientology. And this, by the way, you study this at the beginning of, of every course you pay for from the $40 uh, communication entry course, all the way up to OT8, where you learn how to control matter, energy, space, and time. Um, so this this is a serious business. Uh, and uh, why do I bring it up? Uh, well, it's it's to explain how things that that uh, don't seem rational to us may seem a little bit different to a hardcore uh, Scientologist. Uh, it explains how 11 top Scientologists, including L. Ron Hubbard's wife, Mary Sue, went to prison back in the late 70s for crimes against the federal government and the Clearwater government just a few years after they snuck into town here. Um, now, KSW, Keeping Scientology Working, I mean, that's... That's what all of this is about. Um, in, in Scientology, I mean, are they, is Scientology behind all the purchases here since 2017 after Ms. Cabbage cut all communications with the city? Well, we don't know that. Uh, but it sure fits a pattern on how Scientology behaves and how it's routinely behaved when Ms. Cabbage wants to accomplish something. In 1993, after years of fighting the IRS and what Miscavige declared a war, suddenly hundreds of Scientologists in, in a week filed individual lawsuits against the IRS, bringing the IRS to its knees. Did, uh, did Scientology and Miscavige uh, coordinate that effort? We don't know. But we do know that when he sat down with the IRS commissioner, Ms. Cabbage was the one who could wave his hands and make all of those uh, lawsuits disappear. So, eh, you know, chance it's coordinated. And a few years later, Ms. Cabbage used the same tactics to destroy the Cult Awareness Network, which was a, a small organization, I think based in Chicago, where parents who were concerned about their kids becoming part of a... Uh, of, what could be called the destructive organization, would call for help. And Scientology set out to destroy that. Uh, they had one of their Scientology attorneys, Kendrick Moxon, who, by the way, was an unindicted co-conspirator in the 
crimes that sent all these 11 Scientologists to prison. So Kendrick Moxon found a member of a Christian-based cult and said, hey, 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 I'll, I'll do your case for you for free. It's on me. Uh, and, and he, um, he took uh, down um, the Cult Awareness Network with that. And it helped that at the same time, hundreds of Scientologists all uh, together launched individual lawsuits against the Cult Awareness Network, forcing them into bankruptcy. And once CAN was in bankruptcy, another Scientologist popped up and said, yep, yeah, well, I'll buy the remains of it. And then he took those and turned it over to Scientology. Now when uh, parents are called the, the called Awareness Network, uh, they get a Scientology, a Scientologist who answers the phone. KSW. So there's a, a, a pattern here. No Scientologists think that they're doing anything wrong because KSW is the most ethical thing you can do by Scientology's twisted definition of ethics. And to show you what a small world it is, that Scientologist who bought up the Cult Awareness Network and turned it over to Scientology, he's listed as one of the seven, uh, one, of man one manager of seven of the LLCs used to secretly buy all these North Marina properties. His name is Stephen Hayes. And I'm not saying that he's done anything illegal. I'm just noting a pattern that may be of importance. And speaking of unindicted co-conspirators, in the case of Mary Sue Hubbard, uh, the U.S. versus Mary Sue Hubbard, there was a, a person from Scientology's guardian's office, who that was the dirty tricks department in Scientology, who tried to stop a key figure in those crimes, Michael Meisner, from talking to the feds. This unindicted co-conspirator uh, went to Meisner's apartment and brought along a couple of goons who stood guard. Uh, he, uh, uh, he, they were told to stand guard outside this guy's apartment so Meisner couldn't go to the feds. A couple days later, this unindicted co-conspirator comes back and orders the, the guards to handcuff Meisner behind his back, put a gag in his mouth, and drag him to a vehicle and take him to an undisclosed location. And unfortunately for Scientology, Meisner did manage to escape after that and went straight to the feds, and that's what brought down uh, Scientology's leadership at the time and led to the, the, uh, the raids on Scientology headquarters that exposed all the, the criminal activities that they had been involved with, including here in Clearwater. So this unindicted co-conspirator isn't named as a manager on any of these LLCs. But he did sign and file a notice of commencement for some roof work uh, done on one of these buildings. Uh, again, I'm not suggesting that unindicted co-conspirator Brian Andrus did anything illegal or improper. In fact, he's done the right thing by actually developing the high-end condo complex Marina Bay 880 in that area. And if Scientologists uh, buy property and put it to use, that's great. I, I can support that. There are businesses, successful businesses downtown, that are owned uh, in buildings that are owned by Scientologists, and they lease out space uh, to folks who aren't. And that's the way it should be. I have no problem with that. Although a few days ago, I, I stopped into downtown Pizza, and I did run into a couple of guys who told me uh, that they tried to open up a business on the 500 block of Cleveland, and the Scientologist owner of that building would not give them uh, a long-term lease. He wanted month-to-month -month only. And these, these folks said, I'm supposed to sink $100,000 into fixing up the joint, uh, and I don't have any guarantee? Uh, that I, I'm going to be able to stay here for a while. Uh, so in, in that way, we have to ask more of these owners. We have to ask what their plans are, and we have to ask them to be better stewards of the properties that they own. I don't think that's asking too much. You know, uh, by the way, I, I mentioned Marina Bay 880. Uh, Scientology 880 is a book by L. Ron Hubbard, and I'd be happy to 
to loan you a copy if you'd like to read it. But I'm hoping that we can turn to people like Brian Andrus and Stu Showerman, one of his close friends. I, I heard him talking uh, uh, about their time together on a podcast the other day. Uh, I hope we can urge these people to be open and honest about their plans because we really do need to understand what the hell is going on here. We also have an elected official sitting on the downtown development board who was the real estate broker in 38 of these North Marina properties that list her husband as the LLC manager. And surely we should expect Terry Nowitzki to have Clearwater's best interests in mind and help us understand what the hell is going on. You know, we need to keep Clearwater working. And I hope that we, with, with uh, our new city manager and our new city attorney, I, I, I hope we uh, continue seriously uh, uh, thinking about ways we can deal with this unorthodox situation. Uh, and I, I will uh, rest my case. Any questions for Councilmember Bunker? Uh, Vice Mayor. I, I, get, I, I, I appreciate the historical background, although I was aware of almost all of that. But um, other than trying to, trying to get people who have bought properties to um, tell us what they're going to do with it, what else do you think we should be doing? I mean... Well, I, I think we should be encouraging, uh, uh, you know, our, our team here uh, in Clearwater to be reaching out to the state attorney and the federal government and see if maybe there could be uh, uh, a grand jury uh, started to investigate some of these things, if not the purchasing of property, than any of the other number of illegal things that, that Scientology conducts here constantly. You know, all the Sea Org members, uh, a lot of them are, are brought over here on overseas work visas, and their, their um, visas have been historically taken from them and held by Scientology, uh, making it a little difficult for them to leave if they want to. And that's just one of the controlling issues that Scientology uses. I mean, if you want to invest human trafficking, well, there's, a, there's a place to start. Or elder abuse. Uh, attorney Graham Barry has been successfully taking um, clients to, to court who have been, um, as elders, abused by Scientology's sales tactics, where, where they use these high-pressure tactics that a, a, a Scientologists will come to their home and say, oh, we'll, we'll, I'll help you open up credit cards. And they'll get on the phone with the credit card companies, open up an account, and then say, hey, we need to uh, boost this, uh, this amount. Um, we need to, to put more on that. And they get the approval, and then immediately the Scientologist charges all their Scientology uh, programs to, to these folks' cards. And they... You know, they have an income of like $30,000 a year. The Scientologist was saying it's $300,000 a year income. Uh, so this is fraudulent uh, credit card use that is routine and, and really should be looked at. Um, so I, I, I think we, we should consider this not as, uh, it's a church in the area, Many people consider it organized crime, and I don't think that's a stretch. Um, uh, if the mob said, uh, you know, re we're religion and uh, guns are religious artifacts, they probably wouldn't get away with it for too long. Um, but if you can convince a court, uh, as L. Ron Hubbard put it back in 1953 when he asked, how's the religion angle coming? Uh, if we can get it approved, uh, I, I know I can make it stick. Well, he's done that. But they didn't have a tax-exempt status fully until 93 with the war against the IRS. And I, I'm personally going to be continuing to work 
to see if we can uh, convince the IRS to uh, reopen uh, that case and and fix that uh, uh, that situation. I well, mean, I, it's, I it's, guess my my question, though, Mark, is what you say. I I don't disagree with what you say. Would I love the IRS to come down here and take a look at it again and just verify that the, 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 the standing they gave them in 93 still exists and still applies? Mm -hmm. I think it's great. But I can't say without a fact, because there's a lot of people that have, have screamed about Scientology and all that. I can't say with 100% certainty that they haven't already been here to do that. Can you? I mean... The, the IRS doesn't fly in on an airplane co towing a banner that says, here we come. Yeah, I Nor does the FBI when they do an investigation. So I don't have, I can't say with 100% certainty that it hasn't already happened. Yeah, but it might be nice for us to be proactive and, and ask about it. So, yeah. Uh, and I, you know, uh, there, I've been asked, is there a, a, a ask of the staff? Um, when I brought this, put this on the agenda. Well, I, you know, if I if I move to say, hey, uh, can we have staff reach out to federal and state agencies to help us out here? Um, I'm sure it's going to be like last time. Well, it will, it will be four against one, uh, or three against one. Sorry. Um, so I, I'm not sure that that's effective. But I wanted to open up a conversation. So we can have more input. If people want to come on Thursday and talk about this, that's fine. If Scientologists want to come and talk about this, I'd be happy to, uh, to, to have that happen. Um, but for us to just sit back and go, well, I bought more property and uh, there's nothing we can do about it. It's not illegal. Well, no, maybe it isn't illegal, but maybe there is some, uh, some collusion here with Scientology that we're not aware of that maybe does run afoul of the law in some way, but we're not asking anybody to check into that. And I'm personally trying to do some of that stuff myself. I, I mean, I haven't launched the website yet, but I, I bought a website, um, Domain Tax Scientology Now, and I'll be putting up a site urging people to contact their representatives uh, uh, and and seek uh, some hearings because the, the um, public education on Scientology, the awareness now is so high after going clear and Leah Remini's Scientology in the aftermath and the dozens of books that have been written by uh, Pulitzer Prize winning journalists and former members. There's lots of information that people on the street know now. I mean, uh, John Oliver on last week tonight can can just say, where's Shelly? Where's Shelly, David Miscavige? And people in the audience know what he's talking about and laugh. So there's a high level of interest within the public, and they look at us going, eh, I, guess, uh, I guess we can't do anything. Well, you know, we should, we should at least try, is what I'm suggesting. Council Member Albright? You know, um, Mark, we get criticized up here by you and other ex-Scientologists that we're scared of Scientology, we don't want to ask any questions or do anything, and that's just not true. I'm not scared at all of Scientology, but I have to have something in my hand to say, yes, they've actually done something illegal to act on it. I can't... I, all your stories you've said, I've heard a million times before. But nobody's given me a list saying, okay, here it is right here. Here's where they've broken the law. There's ten things right here. If I had that, that'd be the first thing I'd do is write a letter to the FBI or whatever. I'd ask you all to, let's go ahead and get this done. But buying property is not illegal. We don't like it. Um, I think the way that I think about that is, you know, they're doing, I don't agree with what they're doing, but as long as they keep their properties up, there's nothing we can do about it. Um, except, 
try to think how legally we can make downtown vibrant, even with their property zoned. Now, Brian Andrus is a good example. He's a developer, as with some of the other developers that have made some really nice things when they buy properties. Sure. But I realize that a lot of people have overpaid for properties, and they bought them, and they're sitting on them doing nothing because that's what they've been told to do. I, I know that. Because nobody buys a property, overpays for it, and doesn't get a return on it somehow, right away. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so... If you could tell me, now you've been on council now for two years, you know, come to us and say, here's proof right here what they're doing that's illegal, besides just all the stuff that we hear about that they, we don't like, but they're doing it because it's legal. I don't think we have anything, any leg to stand on. Now, we've talked to Pam Aiken about it. I haven't talked to David Morgales about it, but he's going to be involved with our conversations every week we have, mm -hmm. unless there's something that we can do that's viable, I don't think there's anything that we can do as a council. I mean, you might not like the Catholic Church. Let's go after them. They own a lot of property. I, I mean, you know, it's a, they are deemed a religion. I don't agree that they are, but they've been deemed that by the government. And as you said, they sued and brought down the, you know, the uh, IRS. So, obviously they made an impact with the federal government, and if you don't think the federal government's already investigating them, that's not, you're, you're I mean, that's just something that, you know, we got a guy running for council that says, let, if I can on council, and he's telling people this, I'm going to get council right the FBI and tell them to investigate, which is, to me, that's so ludicrous, because what's he going to tell them to investigate? We're here. You can't have them investigate something unless you have cause. So, and, and we are here representing everybody, whether we like it or not. And I tell my people that, and I'm firm on that. Just because I don't like what they're doing doesn't mean that I, you know, I agree with it. Or if there's anything I can do. Now, what I can do is figure out how I can work around them to get downtown vibrant Maybe there's some things we can do, and I've talked to John and I've talked to David about it. I think we can maybe change some codes and bring things in that bring people downtown in front of their buildings that are empty. And that's something I'd like to, to uh, you know, keep looking into and seeing if there's, we can do that. But there's nothing we can do to get around the law on this unless you can tell me, unless you can bring me something on paper saying, here's, here's what they've done more than just stories you know, then we can act on it. Yeah. So that's kind of where I'm coming from. And I'm not scared of Scientology. Everybody's, I mean, I've heard you say that, and I've heard the guy running for a council say that. They're scared. Oh, they don't want to even mention Scientology. That's not true. But we have a job here, and we're going to do our job, and we're going to keep it legal. So I would say let's go ahead and figure how to fix things without their help, because I haven't seen any help since I've been on council. So, and, yeah, and uh, I don't think we'll see any help from Scientology in the future, but, you know, things, things may change after 45-some years. But at any rate, um, in, in some of the videos that I, I've done with Aaron Smith-Levin, who is running for a seat here, um, I, I do say no one's afraid of Scientology sitting up here. I, I may have said that earlier, but now I, I say... No one is paid off by Scientology. Nobody's in Scientology's pocket. It's, it's none of that stuff. It's a matter of, uh, you know, as you said, what are we going to do? There's nothing we can do. Well, I would hope that we would continue to find ways to, um, uh, to look into this because, I mean, after all, it wasn't until... Meisner escaped from uh, his captivity and went to the feds that they had enough to, to raid Scientology's headquarters and found all of the crimes that had been going on back in the 70s. Um, and there's plenty of abuses and crimes being going on now. I don't have a Meisner that we can turn to, but if we can convince somebody that 
there's sure a pattern here worth investigating. Maybe, and, and I, I've talked to David about this, and I, I may be well off base on this, but uh, maybe somebody can launch a grand jury to, to be probing, uh, subpoenaing, uh, and digging for documents that would uncover some of the uh, situations that have been going on. Maybe there is some information about uh, collusion in all the purchase of the properties. Maybe uh, there's just tax uh, uh, problems that, you know, Scientology uh, used for decades this building that we, we gave um, the, these developers uh, half a million dollars to restore. And Scientology have been using that for storage. They've been using it to train auditors. They they actually did the OT3 course in that building for decades. Did they pay any taxes on that building, or was that just uh, unclaimed? Um, I mean, it wasn't owned by Scientology. Uh, were, were they renting space to do all of this? Maybe they weren't. Maybe if you look into some of this stuff and you find out, oh, yeah, there's, there's all sorts of crazy hidden stuff here through their labyrinth of organizations and um, there are things that that uh, can that are actionable we can't we can't find that out but somebody with more power who might be able to start uh, an investigation uh, probably would and you know there's there's a, a world of people out there now who aren't afraid to speak up uh, and in, in the latest article about Mr. Jennings starting here, um, Tracy McMahon has talked about how um, you and Mr. Jennings and Mr. Margolis are, are going to sit down uh, to meet with David Miscavige. Fine. I mean, I, I'd sit down with him myself. But I would like the three of you, if you can all get together, uh, sit down with Mike Rinder. Why not? Find out before you talk to Miscavige what Miscavige thinks, how he operates, what he's really saying to you when he says, oh yeah, I want a vibrant downtown. I mean, that to me would be a proactive step that we could take uh, that would make the city, people in the city who, who are concerned about the council say, oh, they do have some balls. Okay, they are trying to do something. They are taking some action. Maybe we won't strip them of the tax-exempt status. Maybe we won't convince any of those property owners to actually do anything uh, with the properties they purchased at exorbitant prices. Maybe. But at least the people in Clearwater and around the world, frankly, would be happy to see that we're trying to do something. And sitting down with Mike Rinder is not that hard of an ask. So uh, can, can we at least make that happen? Well, Mr. Jennings and Mr. Margolis can meet with anybody they want. I've met with Mr. Rinder several times, so uh, he's been in my office. All right. So, uh, all right, so you don't need to be in this meeting. But if so I did that you... long before you were ever on this council, and I don't even know where you were living at the time. But uh, that's already occurred. So. so did you meet him when he was in Scientology then? No. Okay. I, I thought maybe this was, you know, when you were off the first time. No. Okay. Since he's left. All right. And talked to him subsequently many times, including being on the Leah Remedy show. Mm -hmm. So I'm surprised he hasn't told you those stories. Well, I, you know, it's not so much that um, he hasn't said, well, the mayor won't talk to me. Because I haven't talked about that. I've talked to him about speaking with the city manager and the city attorney. Okay. You know Scientology. You, you lived here. I, I, I know uh, pretty much your stance on Scientology, and you're not in anyone's pocket. Um, well, thank you. But, uh, but again, just, uh, just for the sake of the public saying, oh, they're not uh, just sitting back and going, uh, nothing we could do. Maybe we could try something, even if it's just to sit down and educate our, our newest um, leaders 
about what, what happens here in the city. Council Member Beckman. Yeah, well, I respect your passion, Mark, and, I, and I'm glad you shared what your concerns are. I would, uh, well, just since we're going on the record, <laughs> I'm not afraid of Scientology, whatever that means. Um, I'll meet with anyone and, you know, I'm willing to learn. I would um, swing this over to our city attorney and ask him, what are our options here? Um, I would be reluctant to comment too much at a public meeting. I mean, there's a couple different, there's a lot of things to dissect here, right? I mean, one aspect of this to dissect is whether or not there's any illegal activity taking place. That's kind of one set of issues. And then as a totally separate set of issues, there's in the absence of any illegal activity or even in the presence of illegal activity, what is a uh, council's role and what can this city do, if anything, to navigate that, that process? Um, so, I mean, those are kind of two big issues to unpack. The way I see it as someone who's brand new to the city and who does not come in, you know, with the background, um, with the decades of history that many of you have, there's really three big picture philosophical approaches that the council can take when it comes to interacting with Scientology. One philosophical approach is to partner with them and to find a way to move forward uh, that advances both of our interests. The second philosophical approach is to build around them um, to effectively ignore them, don't talk to them, don't talk about them. They are on their path, we're on our path, has nothing to do with each other. And the third uh, is some kind of path of conflict, whether that is a path of um, with law enforcement or through other means. Those are what I see as kind of the three big picture philosophical approaches of how to approach this topic. Which of those three philosophies to pursue is really a decision for council. Um, I feel that Mr. Jennings and I you know, probably are going to take our lead from the majority of council as to what direction you guys want to go. Once a philosophical approach has been outlined um, to us, which I would recommend during one-on-ones, or Mr. Jennings and I can meet with each of you individually to get a sense of that, uh, that kind of guides everything else. So that's my two cents as someone who's new to the city. Can I follow up and ask, so Council Member Hamilton mentioned that perhaps a federal entity or the um, attorney general in the state has um, uh, done some investigating and made some conclusions. Can we at least ask if that has happened? Uh, we can certainly ask um, if that's what council would like us to do. Um, I mean, knowledge is power, right? I mean, we should know if something has been investigated. As you said, they could have been here. We don't know. I mean, well, I mean, I, yeah. I would. You take somebody like the IRS and the federal government and you give somebody a tax exemption on something, I think the IRS pays pretty close attention. Hey, these people have a tax exemption and it's based on this. We need to make sure they still have that. And I, I would think it would be good business and standard, good standard and business practice to periodically verify that they still, whatever entity it is, is entitled to whatever tax exemption it is they've been granted. Now, that, to me, that just makes common sense. Now, whether or not they've done that, I don't know. I don't know. But, um, yeah, like I've said many, many times, I was born here before Scientology. I was here before Scientology ever got here. I've been here the whole time they've been here. Am I happy with what they've done to our city? No. But... They are not the res they are not the reason downtown is in the condition got to the condition it got it was in. They took advantage of a downtown that was uh, deteriorating because of the expansion of our city out towards U.S. 19 and and whatnot. But as I've told many people, if I had my druthers, would I rather Scientology not be in Clearwater? Absolutely. But until you can bring forward anybody, and I put this out there, until anybody or somebody can bring forward a verifiable, uh, verifiable, actionable crime 
by Scientology, you bring forward a verifiable, actionable crime of Scientology, I guarantee you the Colorado Police Department will jump all over it. They'll, they'll investigate it just like they do everything else. But you gotta, you've got to have that. And to my knowledge, it just hasn't come forward. So, you know, it's... Yeah, Scientologists have a policy uh, that uh, you don't go to uh, the police. That's why we cover up, um, or Scientology covers up uh, a, a lot of the crimes because um, they're told that it, as a Scientologist, if you report uh, some crime to the police, well, you're going to be disconnected. You'll be tossed out and you won't see your family anymore. Um, and, you know, the, the police and lawyers, the, that's all part of a wog world, which we are part of. We are lowly wogs who don't have Hubbard's tech. These are the terms that, that they use. Um, so Scientologists are trained not to trust authority, uh, only listen to, uh, what Scientology says, um, so it is, it is hard to get people to come forward. Uh, it'd be great if we had an atmosphere where people really felt safe coming to us, but then we have uh, all the um, sunshine laws here uh, where we couldn't keep anyone uh, secret if they did reach out to us. Um, so that's, that's kind of a difficult situation. Um, well, they can if they reach out to our police department. If they reach out to you or me, that's a different story. All right. Uh, anyway, again, I, I, when I put this on the agenda, I knew there, there's, I'm not going to ask for us to do anything. Um, I just thought it's important that we talk about it with uh, our new um, leaders here. Um, be open about this and let the public know that we're concerned. We understand that there's something odd going on with these purchases. Um, and we should be coming up with some, some new tactics to tackle this problem. And, and I believe that's something that uh, is already being considered. So that's all. Well, I think everybody is concerned. Um, I certainly am concerned with our whole city. Sure. I mean, we have to watch the entire city and neighborhoods and different regions of the city and sure. different departments. But one of the reasons that I originally got into elected office was because of downtowns stunted growth and you know the things that have been done over the years I think have improved things but we should be much further along than we are and uh, that's extraordinarily disappointing and as I've said I don't find the behavior to be rational so at some point if rational behavior does not break out then you know that's going to be an issue uh, but I think there's different things we can look at, both carrots and sticks. And, you know, some of it's going to be over time. Uh, I think everybody's made clear nobody's scared. Uh, that really isn't the issue. Uh, the issue is where are we going from here? And, you know, I do try to think strategically about how we can make downtown better. And I will tell you, there are properties that I want. I don't need cash. We're, we're okay with money. We've always been responsible with our budgets. But I would like some land that I think are more strategic to the city than some of the properties that we own. The old CMA property and the fire station are not as strategic as some of the other properties that are owned either by parishioners or by the church 
that I think would be very beneficial to us advancing downtown. And when we get rid of playing cards, then, you know, we have less to play with and less tools in the toolbox. And that's what I meant earlier about item 2.1. So, all right. We thank everybody. We will see you all on... That items for the future. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, so some ideas for items for the future. Uh, maybe reports from our economic development and CRA directors to see how green print and our stated goals are... Um, what happened to that? Um, new business. Okay. Oh, can our fleet manager, Perry Cozen, present to the council our plans for tra transitioning our fleet to EVs, what that um, means, what it looks like in the timeline and budget, how will, will we be meeting these green print goals, and then maybe reports from our economic development and CRA director, CL Green Print, and our stated goals factor into their plans and outreach, and then um, a discussion of maybe involving our upcoming election and our... Um, the decisions made about early walk-in voting and any targeted mailers. So, you know, there was some information that targeted mailers or outreach to voters would go to hot voters. Um, and so when I look at voters, you know, we, I classify them as hot, warm, or cold based on their, um, how many uh, elections they vote in. And then we have new voters. And I would think that um, it might be better to target warm and new voters rather than hot. Hot voters tend to turn up regardless of a bunch of mailings. Um, but anyway, that's just a conversation maybe in the future. Okay. Anyone else? Mr. Jennings? Yeah, I just, I just, I did want to respond to Councilmember Beckman. Um, uh, as we discussed last week, um, from Ms. Mrs. Call and I will will talk um, today or whenever she has time. Um, and then the other items you had mentioned, I just need to talk with the directors to see whether where we are with each one of those before they get scheduled. Well, and I'm thinking that you know, with the county adopting their renewable energy goals, those ready for 100 targeted goals, uh, relates to sustainability and um, the environment that. You know, that means the whole county is kind of on board here, heading in that direction. And how does that impact our reaching out to developers and businesses? Well, and I've told the city manager I'd like to discuss doing a moratorium on US-19 for apartments and storage. Yeah. And so that's something I would like to be discussing. Uh, the US-19 quarter is going to be swallowed up soon and so far we have had not one project that has followed the US 19 guidelines for incentives and that's a tragedy and a waste and if we don't do something uh, then there's not going to be any opportunity left so I know the moratorium uh, concept is uh, frightening to some We've only talked about it twice, I think, in my 20-year mm -hmm. history. And um, we backed down on both of them. But uh, I think it's going to be a lost opportunity that we're going to look back and regret. So, all right. With that, we're adjourned. We'll see everybody Thursday.